Okay, let's learn how to do these basic algebra equations. So hopefully this is, uh, you know, going to be a review for most of you out there. But if you're learning algebra, basic algebra, and you never, you know, studied this stuff or don't know how to solve these basic equations, I think this video is going to be a good little, you know, um, it's going to be enough instruction for you to get this. However, you still want to obviously practice this in much more detail. But before you can um, solve more you know, uh, advanced equations in algebra, you got to know how to do the basic stuff. So we're going to focus on these problems here. And uh, I would also encourage you, if you think you know how to do the problems, kind of play along, pause the video and see if you can knock these problems out real quick. They should take you no more than, you know, literally one minute to do uh, in total, all right, if you know what you're doing. But uh, we're going to get to each one here in a second. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabaclass Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed just many, many online math classes. So if you're in need of math help, whether you need to take a full math course uh, or some sort of supplemental assistance for the math class that you're taking right now, then you definitely want to check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. Also, if you need a pair of notes for something like this, you might want to check out my pre-algebra notes. But if you need a good reference uh, set of reference notes for your math class, you can find the link to those notes underneath this video or in the description. Okay, so we got um, four problems here. And let's just look at these things real quick. So we have an addition problem. We have a subtraction problem. Then we have, this is a multiplication situation. Then we kind of have like a division situation. So we refer to these problems, okay? Oftentimes they're referred to as one-step equations, all right? One-step uh, algebra equations because uh, we're going to be able to solve these equations in one step, okay? All right, so let's get to these problems now and emphasize some basic concept concepts in algebra. All right, so the first thing is, um, have you, you know, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you know how to work with positive and negative numbers, okay? If you don't really know how to work with positive and negative numbers right now, then you want to check out some of my other YouTube videos on uh, the rules for positive and negative numbers. They're not difficult, but uh, I'm going to be using them in our basic example here, okay? All right, so here, the main thing with algebra is the following. Let's just kind of use a little teeter-totter, okay? A little uh, uh, little swing here, right? A balance, a, a fulcrum, whatever you want to call it, kind of think of this as. So an equation in algebra, we have all this stuff on one side, we have all this stuff on another side. And basically we're saying one side is equal to another side. So like a, this side could be like 20 pounds and it's equal to this side. If it if it's equal, right, then the right-hand side is 20 pounds, the left-hand side is 20 pounds. It's always in balance, okay? So let's say I add five pounds to this side of the uh, the scale, okay? What happens? Well, obviously, it's going to tip like this, right? This is heavier. So to get it back in balance, i got to add another five pounds here, okay? So in algebra, we need to keep the equation always in balance, always in balance, and that means... Uh, conceptually is the following, all right? Okay, kind of look at it this way. So the main concept, the main rule of solving algebra equations is the following. Whatever we do over here, whatever steps we take on one side, okay, and I could take anything I want. It's like adding weight or taking weight off the scale. Whatever I do here, I have to do the exact same steps here, okay? So whatever I do on one side of the equation, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it equally to the other side of the equation. And the objective, okay, is to solve equations is to get x equals, okay, the variable by, its, the variable by itself in some number. Okay, and the variable could be x, y, t, z, it doesn't make a difference, okay? All right, so with that being said, let's get into the basic mechanics of these one-step equations. All right, we have x plus 3 equals negative 9. So I want to get x is equal to, okay, x is equal to itself. So how can I get x is equal to itself, but I got a plus 3 here? Well, we can be like, hmm, let's just get rid of this 3. Let's just get rid of it. I'm like, hey, 3, we don't want you here. <laughs> hate to kind of say it that way, but let's get rid of the 3. How do I get rid of a positive 3? How about we just subtract a 3? Okay, if I got a positive 3, I can get rid of it by subtracting a 3. No problem, right? 
However, remember the rule. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do the exact same thing to the other side, all right? So the way I'm writing this is the way you should write it as well, okay? So we're going to draw a little line like this. So what I'm doing, in essence, okay, in our little scale, is I'm adding a negative 3 to both sides, all right? I'm not damaging the equation. I'm keeping it in balance, but it's going to help me out with my objective. Now, when you write an equation like that, you kind of want to add down in a column manner. So x plus nothing is what? Just x, all right? We'll write that x right here. Because positive 3 plus a negative 3, or 3 minus 3 is what? 0. I don't need to write a 0 there, okay? It's just implied. It's these. I, I got rid of the 3 over here on this side. And then negative 9 plus negative 3 is a negative 12, okay? And that is my solution. That's it. It took me one step. The, the step that I took was to add negative 3 to both sides of the equation. All right, so if you're kind of understanding, okay, for, to get rid of this positive 3, I had to use the opposite operation, negative. Well, then let's kind of go to our next problem and see if we can apply that same technique over here because it's pretty similar, right? All right, anytime you think you could do these problems, you should just pause the video and, and do it. But let's get into y minus 2 equals 10. All right, well, I want the y by itself. So how can I get y by itself? Well, we got get we have to get rid of this negative 2 next to the y. We're like, hey, sorry, we're going to have to get rid of you. So how do I get rid of that negative 2? Well, how about we add a 2, a positive 2, okay, to it. So I got negative 2. We'll add a positive 2 uh, to it. It's going to make it vanish. But I also got to do the exact same thing on the other side. That is the main rule of algebra, right? So when I add down in a column manner... I'm going to get y is equal to negative 2 plus 2, 0. It vanishes, and I have 10 plus 2, which is 12. And there you go. Okay, so what was the one step? The one step was just adding 2 to both sides of the equation. But notice the pattern here. When it was negative, I had to add. When it was addition, I had to use subtraction. Okay, this is the kind of concept, another concept of solving equations in algebra called like inverse operations, we call it, but we don't need to get into all that fancy nomenclature. Let's get into our last two problems. Okay, this one is what? What operation is this saying? This is negative 2 times t. This is multiplication, right? So when we have multiplication, what would be, well, let me go back this way. When we had addition, its inverse operation was subtraction, right? When we just, uh, I'm talking about the answer, the problems we just did. When I have subtraction, its inverse operation is addition. So if I have multiplication, what do you think its inverse is going to be? Yes, you guessed it, division. And let's just go ahead and do it here. If I have division, what's its inverse multiplication? Okay. So here I have negative, negative two times t. Uh, equals 14. I want to get to t by itself. So it's multiplication. So the way that I get t by itself is I could divide both sides of the equation. I could divide this side by negative 2, okay? Because anything divided by itself, okay, is going to be just 1, a nice positive 1, right? So if I take negative 2 and I want to get rid of that in front of the t, I'm like, hey, I just want the t. I don't want the negative 2 part. If I divide that by itself, negative 2, I get a positive 1t, but again, the main rule of algebra is whatever I do on one side of the equation, I got to do to the other. So 14 divided by negative 2 is going to be negative 7. All right. So here I had multiplication, but I used division to uh, uh, solve this one step equation. All right. So I kind of left the best for last. This one kind of confuses students. So I'm going to give you uh, the easiest way to think of how to do this. All right, so here we have two fifths. Okay, it looks like division. I could kind of look at this this way. An equivalent way of writing this problem would be 2h over 5 equals 1 half. Okay, this is, means the same thing. Okay, so we're kind of dividing. Um, so this is like a division scenario. So we're like, okay, we're going to use multiplication. We are going to use multiplication, but I'm going to show you the easiest way to approach these problems. So... This one is 2 fifths times h equals 1 half. So how do I solve a scenario here? I want, I want h is equal to itself. Here's the deal, okay? Anytime you have a fraction in front of a variable just like this, okay, 
All you have to do is flip this guy upside down, okay, which is what? Five halves, all right? And when I multiply five halves times two fifths, I'm going to get one H or just H, okay? That's what I want, right? The objective is just to get H by itself, all right? And I could do that. I got this two fifths in front of here. I'm like, ah, how do I get rid of you? Well, how about I multiply it by uh, what we call its reciprocal. So that's going to be five over two, because when I multiply across, I'm going to get 10 over 10 or one, okay? Or one H or just H. We don't write uh, like we don't write like one H, we'll just write H, okay? This means there is a one in front of the H, but we never really write the one, okay? But what's the deal here? Well, the deal is what? I multiplied the left-hand side by five halves, so I have to do the same thing on this side. You gotta always be fair, all right, in algebra. Okay, so now, once I figure this out, I'll have my answer, okay? So five halves times two fifths is H, we already talked about that, one H. So one half times uh, uh, five halves is going to be five fourths, right? We just multiply across and that's it. We are done. Yay. So we got our little happy face, our little stars, you know, or A plus or 100%. That's the good stuff, right? And you're like, oh man, I ace that quiz. Okay. So here's the thing. Before you can understand complicated you know, equations like, I don't know, let's just say, write something like, like this. Uh, so before you can understand how to solve an equation like this in algebra, okay, we have to, uh, this is what we call a multi-step, multi-step equ uh, equation. It just requires multiple steps to do, all right? But those individual steps, the okay, multiple steps, but each step, okay, effectively is the steps that I just went over. These are the four primary steps that you need to understand. So once you understand how to do that, then you can you can uh, you know climb as high as you want in algebra. It's very much like to walking up you know actual steps, right? I'm kind of, these are some messed up steps, but you kind of get the idea. If I want to get to this right here, as long as I know how to go from this step, oh, and just climb another step, well, I'm just repeating myself, right? I'm taking a step, I'm taking a step, I'm taking a step. So same concept in algebra, right? To solve something that's more complicated and challenging, it's just a series of steps, but the individual steps are like stairs on a on a ladder well, okay? You're just taking these these primary steps. You gotta understand these things. And I would say put special emphasis on the fraction uh, problem that we looked at and working with positive and negative numbers. But if you understand this, you'll be able to so solve much more sophisticated algebra equations, okay? And if you are obviously studying this math or you're, any kind of math course that you, you know, are having to learn or work with, uh, formulas or equations, you got to know this stuff, okay? And it's not that hard. It's not that hard. But what's the main thing that you have to do? After you can learn it, you have to practice. You have to practice. You got to do a ton of these problems. Okay? That's the only way you're going to get a good at math. Watching me to do, do these videos and understanding it is not enough. So you got to practice. If you want complete, full practice with explained examples, I'll give you two um, suggestions. One, my best work is always going to be within my math help program. And secondly, uh, on my YouTube channel, I have uh, tons of videos on other problems that I have solved. So if you like my teaching style, okay, those are two good places to kind of uh, practice. All right. So with that being said, hopefully you'll become a subscriber to my channel. If you, you know, if you like the work that I do, I'm posting stuff all the time. So, you know, please consider becoming a subscriber. And if you really got something out of this video, smash that like button. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.